All right. Hello, chat. Uh, how are you all doing today? Hopefully fine. My bit rate looks like it's holding, so my internet's been a bit spotty, but you know. Seems to hold right now, so let's, let's just go for it. I've got a couple to do today. Um, Hi, chat. We're going to be looking at Yum. I'm hoping that's how you pronounce that. <coughs> Uh, thank you for all me, Sudi. That's you are watching right now. <laughs> Yum? Is that how you pronounce it? Yum? In uh, either case, we're going to be looking at you. Now, this is a. Tracer is one of those few heroes where you can basically play them whenever you want, wh wherever you want, like any map, any composition. Tracer is really good. There are some maps, like, especially that that is what, was, uh, what I wanted to get to. Maps with, like, verticality are not ideal for Tracer because Tracer is really good at taking flanks and maps that require her to go through chokes like this and into the high run you may got it uh, are not as good for Tracer but she is still a hero you can play on like every map if you well just are good enough with it so, yeah because even though yeah getting to the high run is difficult you can always make a long rotation it's just that making a long rotation is more time consuming As for your team, you've got to be in mind that you got an Ana, but she's probably going to be focused on healing your tanks. Uh, so if you want healing, you've got to make sure that you are either on the line of sight of the Ana, or just play around the health packs. Tracer is really good at playing around health packs. <coughs> I guess what I'm saying is, you don't have a Brigitta, you don't have a Senyata, who could be healing you long range if you needed it. And Dana is probably going to be focused on the tanks. On defense, I don't dislike this. You are trying to get to the high ground. <laughs> you are trying to get to the high ground. Uh, it's not necessary that you start here. Uh, honestly, if you want to go for an okay flank, you can always just set up behind behind here, right? This is okay. Not great, but okay. You can always set up on the Mega. Uh, hi, Sander. Uh You can always just set up on, on a flank where we are. This is also okay, though not ideal, because they can actually see you. But it's not necessary that you start on this high ground. And my guess is that you're trying to go for a jump on the back line, but it exposes you a lot. <laughs> like doing this usually costs you two to three blinks. School is messed me up. Oh, RIP. Uh, hopefully, school is like it's going to be over soon, right? With uh, Christmas and all of that, you, you, you're getting a break. Uh, so yeah, you, you have to invest two, even maybe three blinks to get you the back line, and you're gonna have to recall out. So you are investing a lot of cooldowns into a dive that may not have, and then you're gonna have to wait to have your cooldown back. But let's see how it goes. You're waiting, you're waiting. This is what I mean, by the way. You could, if you were taking a flank, maybe even here. This is not a bad place to take a flank if you just wait here. Because, if anything, if you've got to recall back here, you've got a mini, and then you can run away. See, no one no one ever looks at At higher ranks, people may check this flank, this little hole inside. But, especially in lower ranks, people don't look at uh, areas like this. So you can really just hide, and when people go out, you just go back on Diana, and then get out yourself. Let's see what you do. Also, I want to point out, you are basically diving blind. Unless your team is telling you, like, I don't know if you, how good the comps were on this game, but unless someone in your team is telling you exactly what they have and exactly where something is, you are basically going in blind. <coughs> That's a good hook. If you work with your team or on a flank, uh, at the beginning my brain was dead. <laughs> That's unlucky. I was gonna say, if you were little, just a little bit closer, you could have helped kill this area. This is just outside of your range. Like, Tracer's range is actually pretty good. If you were like a meter closer or two meters closer, you could probably still shoot at like full damage. <coughs> oh, you're trying to get to the high ground. And I, that just, yeah. That's just wasting cooldowns for no reason. You do five damage to the Rhine, one damage to the Rhine. You have done nothing. It's been 30 seconds and you've done nothing. I get it, this is a cheeky spot, and especially a lot of dive tanks like to set up here. 
But the reason dive tanks like to set up here is because, well, they can just drop to engage, right? Uh, dive tanks have vertical mobility, like Monkey can just jump, Diva can just jump. So they don't need to set up here when they can take a lot of poke damage, where they can just set up here. I got a kill for Lucky Jack Organize. It's, it's a fine. <clears throat> we'll see, we'll see, we'll analyze it as we, as we get to hear that. But the, the thing is, uh, so the review, you can put it, you can publish it on my Discord. Discord, there you go. Um, you are kind of fly. Uh, yeah, no, you are literally flying. Um, but yeah, the reason dive tanks like to set up here is because, well, they can avoid uh, taking a bunch of damage. If the team goes this way, you can just drop on them. And if the team goes this way, you've got a good dive, a good dive setup, right? Because you can dive, then you can get out this way, or you can drop this way. And if they try to drop, then you can just jump back onto the high ground and control the high ground. So the reason dive tanks are actually really good here is because they can just drop. If you play here, they get spammed. If you play here, you do not get spammed because they're out of the wall. But with traces like, but with heroes like Tracer, you don't have to set up here because you have no vertical mobility. So while yes, in theory, if someone went this way, you could just dive the backline. Uh, you could do the same if you were playing here or if you weren't playing here because you got a vertical, a lot of horizontal mobility, and you've got a lot of normal mobility that your tanks usually don't have because you don't want to go into their front line. You want to go into the back line. So it's going to be difficult for them to kill you anyway. So you don't, your retreat doesn't require you to go back to the high ground. Your retreat basically just requires you pressing E to get back to safety. <clears throat> I don't dislike this blink. But again, you are investing basically all of your cooldowns to go in. Whereas if you had just gone in from here, if you had set up either here or you were behind them on a flank or whatever, Going this way is basically just, well, easier. Uh, you can just walk this way. Tracer walks faster, like, Tracer's speed is 6 meters per second, whereas everyone else's, well, Tracer and Genji. Genji. Pretend this is a G. <clears throat> everyone else's is 5.5 meters per second, so Tracer and Genji move faster than every other hero in the game. Just by walking. You're playing too close. I can't really tell you you're playing too close. <clears throat> um, so, the, you know, this is actually okay. This is okay, Tracer range, but you don't want to be this close to people. And you basically only are this far away because you blinked out. You want to play at around one blink distance from people. Because Tracer range is actually like, she got buffed, so her dropout is actually 13 meters now. So you can play around 11 meters and still be really good and do a lot of damage. And yeah, you are just blinking in to try to do damage. You don't want to be this close. I see this a lot with lower rank tracers. Uh, that just playing a bit further back can improve your game a lot. Both in the sense that you are in less danger because, well, if you're playing with a Jangrat, he wants you to be this close, so he's, he can press, he can just throw his mines at you. Like the, the shift mines, not his grenades, like the mines. And secondly, he can just hit you easier with the AoE and his own grenades. <clears throat> so Jankrat wants you to be close to him. Thunder was an and I maybe could walk Clipper. That's fine, and again, it's it's okay, but you really got to play further away. Like, you are instinctively playing too close. And this is something you've got to work on. Because right now what I've seen is you basically are just trying to duel people at, like, very close range. Whereas, you don't have to. And they, they want you to be close, like... <clears throat> if they got a growth hog, he wants you to be this close. Jangrat wants you to be this close. Reinhardt wants you to be this close. This is tracking. <clears throat> and again, look how close you are getting. Like, look how close you are to this Mora. You don't have to keep walking forward. If you shoot it from here, you get the same damage. And you can track easier because. Hold on, let me let me explain it to you. I can I think I can actually do it from above on this one and it will look pretty good. <clears throat> okay, so let's look at this. this will heal you. Where are you coming from? There you are. Okay, so look at this. I don't think you understand the so 
and this situation, if you shoot the Moira from here, you do the same damage as if you shoot the Moira from here, because this is in your effective range. And also, if the Moira moves, like she does, because she moves a little bit, she moves farther away from you, uh, you have an easier time tracking her, because I want to look at this from your perspective, if I can. Uh, because if the Moira moves away, then all you got to do with your aim, you're aiming at the chest, by the way, aim, aim at the head. But all you got to do is do this with your mouse, right? It's very, very, uh, not your mouse. I think you're playing in, are you playing on PC or are you playing on console? Uh, you are playing on PC. Okay, yeah, your mouse. Um, so yeah, what I mean is, all you've got to do is this small movement. It's a small correction and it's a lot easier to get. Thank you for the follow, Brayton. It's a slow, easier to do this correction than it is to do, because if you are up close to the Moira, you got to make this correction for the same movement. Uh, all right, I'll do it probably as soon as I'm done with the queue. I put a few on the queue today, so uh, just know that it's been quit on the queue. <clears throat> but yeah, I, I don't know why it keeps taking you back there. Basically what you're doing, but moving closer, is making it harder for you to track the Moira. I'll let you know when I'm going live with yours. So yeah, you're, you're making it harder for you to track the Moira. <clears throat> and you blink even closer and then you you recall at almost full health, which is not a good idea either. Let's go back to full speed. <clears throat> you don't want to do the Widow. Like, this is a no-no, she can one-shot you, you, you would need like five whole clips into her body to kill her. No frontline tracer. I like this. Like again, this is a good flank. But the team fight is lost. By shooting at the widow instead of going on the flank earlier, you are getting very low amounts of damage. Can you tell me how to improve the tracking? I've got two things to say for you. One, playing further away will actually improve your tracking. Like playing within the actually we can yeah, just <clears throat> let's do this now instead of later so I don't have to keep coming back to it let's see tracer so what you're doing is basically you're playing this range and if I want to keep my if I want to keep aiming at this guy and he moves a little bit like he moves this much the correction I have to make is this much right it's a pretty big correction and for people who are constantly moving, making these corrections, and especially when you're trying to blink and whatever, it's a lot more difficult than if you are playing here and you got to make this correction. I'm basically not even moving my mouse. I'm just nudging it slightly. And it's the same distance. You can tell that it's, it's the same distance. The correction I had to make, though, so is a lot shorter. Uh, let's see if I can show this with the walking ones. <clears throat> so if I want to keep track of this guy, while we are this close and he keeps moving, I got to move my mouse a lot more than if I'm playing all the way here, right? And if I want to keep track of him, I can just like move my mouse a little bit and it becomes a lot easier to track people down. And like I said, from this range, uh, about a little more than 10 meters, good luck on the internet. <laughs> uh, it's been working, so don't don't jinx it. At this range, you can still one clip people. It's, it's, uh, it's inside, like I said, trace six. Effective range is 13 meters. <clears throat> so, up to 13 meters, you do full damage. And you do the same damage being like here. It's the same damage than if you were all the way back here. It's literally the same amount of damage. <clears throat> uh, uh, the advantage of playing this far is that if they got a Reaper, if they got a Rotog, if they got a Vine, if they got a Jangrat, any hero that wants to be closer to you. Maybe even a Saria or a Brigitte or a McCree for the stun. Any hero that wants to be close wants you to be closer, right? They will try to push you and you should back out and keep your distance. Because while this, you can do the same damage from here, they cannot. They have a shorter range than you do. This is why the buff to Tracer 13 meter was so big. Because now she outranges a lot of heroes. And you can basically just play at this range and if they push you, you back out. And they do like nothing to you and you just do everything to them and 
another advantage of playing at this range is that I, I went too far back there because I was fucking out, but you guys don't mean. Another advantage of playing at this range is that it is a blink range. You just blink in, you can melee, you can get out, right? Uh, if, if you needed to finish a kill, maybe someone is very low, you milk in, melee, get out. Playing Doomfist and Brigitta. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, basically, Doomfist too, Doomfist is, his left click doesn't have drop off, but uh, it spreads very fast. So, if you play close, he just kills you, and if you play far away, he only maybe shoot one. But yeah, playing at this range is just better for Tracer. Okay, let's go back to the review. Give me the free plays. I don't always view <clears throat> where were we but here no nope, too late you die here so probably not I think it's here you shoot at the widow yeah you you are wasting time here all you should be preparing for a flank and this is not how you go for a flank you should be going this way so you don't expose yourself to damage so you should be waiting here or where you were is okay, it just takes a very long time to set up. And again, you don't, you ignore the Widow, and instead of going for the flank, you go to the front line, then you back out, and then you go for the front. So you just took a very long time to get to the flank, and when you go in, your team's already lost the fight. <clears throat> like, this is not a bad flank, but the fight is lost, you've got no supports. And again, if you were a little bit further behind, you could have probably killed the Demora, no problem. Recall. You're being an annoyance, but the, again, the fight is probably lost already. Yeah. <coughs> Nothing you can do, just go die on point. You can kill the Widow. Unlucky. Uh, oh, my sense and DPI. So, the, the way you... Everyone's sense and DPI is different. But the way I usually do it is that I want to make sure that from either side, like if this, if hold on, if this is, uh, if this is my mouse pad and my mouse is in the middle, of course, I want to make sure that I can make a 180 either way. So the full distance of your mouse pad is a 360, right? Like if you move your mouse to the very left. And then go to the very right, it should do at, uh, about a 360, not exactly a 360. How much or more or how much less depends on what you're comfortable with. Uh, mine is, I believe, 804. 800 times 4. But I've got a lot of mouse pad room. <laughs> so, and this is still somewhat high. I also use 5 for dive heroes. So like Vine, no, no, sorry, Vine. <laughs> um, Monkey, Diva, Ball, I play with five because they just require a lot of things. And mine is basically 800 times four. <clears throat> sorry, not 8,000, 800 times four. <laughs> you get killed, that's fine. Like the fight was lost. So just go time the page. And if you call this time to uh, an unlucky ball, an unlucky bomb, that's Honestly, you were dead anyway. 8k? <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't worry. My mouse can definitely get to 8k DPI. Fight lot, we regroup. Tracer is better on second. <clears throat> 275 and that's why I'm moving so slow. It may be fine for you though, like if you're used to arm aiming, and you've got a lot of... <laughs> um, if you got a, lo a, a lot of mousepad room, and you are reaching the edges, and you are basically... Um, making a, a 180, when you go to either side, it, it might be fine. If, if you, on the other hand, if you are like... If this is 90 degrees for you, and you've got to reset your map, it is very low, yeah. It may be good. If you if you can, and you do, make a whole 180 by looking from the middle to one of the ends, and you do it consistently, um, you may be fine. But if if you're constantly just going like, oh, all I can do is make a 
130 degrees, right? And then you just kind of turn around fast enough. Uh, it's fine. It's especially very. Um... Wait, oh, you're a tank player. Why is your <laughs> why is your sense so low? <laughs> In the case, yeah, uh, you may want to check it. But again, if you if your mousepad is doing uh, like a whole 360 from side to side, if you can make a whole 360, you're pretty good enough. <laughs> I just did the same. But the French is a hitchcock player. <laughs> Uh, that's silly. That's funny, because... <laughs> yeah, but the front is the front. <laughs> and he plays Hitchcock Heroes. <clears throat> right. I like this good pick from uh, Hulk and the Widow. Like I said, Tracy repeated on second, because there are just, like, you can take both of the flanks here. If you want to, you can come this way, you can come this way, right? All the way around. Uh, you can come to this little bit here, you can go all the way around below. You've got a lot of... Um, a lot of uh, routes to take. You can take several different routes to get to the enemy, right? So that that's why second is better for twice than first. You still got the problem that, yeah, this is slow ground, but you got a mega to play around. You got a mini to play around over there, you got a mini to play around over here. So second is definitely a lot better for twice than first. You waited too long, so they spot you. But this is probably still a one fight. <clears throat> and you're still going in, which I don't dislike. Like this, this is good range, by the way. Uh, just be careful, because Moira outranges you. And Moira is honestly just a pain in the ass. But I don't want you to invest this. Like, the fight is won, and we are using ults. And they are using ults, but we are using the flags. I think, and you're distracting the backline. I think you're just gonna try to stick the Ana here. No. Were you going to stick Diana and didn't do it? Or did you just get so close? Because you were playing not... I think, did you double blink and you meant to single blink? I want to look at that again. Because you got very close to Diana. I think you were trying to stick Diana and didn't go through with it. So you take damage, you back out, then you prepare to go back in. Tracking, not great. So you blink, you get too close to Diana. So I think that, okay, you're gonna stick her, right? And the stick does travel a far distance, so you don't need to be this close to stick someone. But you go in and I think, okay, you, you are going to stick the Diana. That's the reason you got so close, because you were playing at a decent range. Like playing at one blink away range is good. So I think you're going to try to stick Diana. But then, oh, I think she gets pulled up before you can stick her, because of the Sigma flags. So you go like, well, fuck it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 that, that's why. Okay, that's fine. That's okay. Don't go win, though. And don't think best like to fight this one. So you just threw it out there for no reason. You don't have to use it. And I don't mind you... Like using Wolf Bomb and getting no value, but you think it at the right time is really the best idea. You will see that a lot of tracers use their Pulse Bomb before the engagement, because if you can flank and get a pick before the engagement, then, well, during the fight, you can start charging your ult back up, and you basically guarantee a fight win before uh, the fight even happens, right? And your team can just run in for cleanup. So, while I don't mind people trying to get Pulse Bombs for no value, uh, if you miss, of course, which you miss, uh, don't do it when the fight is won, because the runner's dead, the jungler's dead, the widow's coming back, our spans are a lot better, the run is almost dead, uh, yeah, we lost Lucio, that's not a big deal, the run is dead, and again, with Tracer, you can play with health packs, just go get a health pack, just, just, just get the Mega, and I cannot heal you right now. Like, how do you expect her to kill you? You come here, go get the Mega. Tracer really wants to play around the the health packs on the on the map. You're just still requesting healing, and you probably will not be getting any. <clears throat> well, no, Lucio heals you, but Lucio, Lucio. So, yeah, play with health packs more as well. 
with Tracer, you you don't need your supports, like, ever. Like, fuck them. You don't need them. Just just play with the health packs. You are the most um, selfish hero in the game. Not literally, because Bold, Rothog, etc., etc. Uh, Sombra. You wanted to go to the point. I get it, but um, getting the Mega and then making sure you can contest with, like, full health. It's probably better, just in case, because if you go to the point and you die, and you also didn't even touch point. Like, you... Okay, let's go back. I get it if you're trying to like, if you're like, oh, they're gonna get a tick, I'm gonna contest. And you just want to die on point. Dying on point here is fine, because if you went straight to point, yeah, you're gonna die. 69, nice. Uh, if you went straight to point, then you get, you prevent them from getting a tick, you die, yeah, but then your team comes back. And maybe you survive long enough to prevent them from getting a tick, and the fight is already won. So it doesn't matter if you die, but you do not commit to either. You do not go on point, so you they still get a tick, and you don't go to the mega. So you're basically doing a half fast attempt. You're just standing here and requesting healing, and honestly, yeah, Lucio will come, will come back. So you could have prevented, if you fully committed to going to the point and contesting the point, then yes, you would have died, but you could have prevented them from getting a tick. <clears throat> or the other option is... Well, yeah, let's just give them a tick and make sure we win the fight. I'll go get the Mega, come back, they get a tick anyway, but then I can just kill the, the Saga myself. <clears throat> so, what I'm saying is, I'm not saying it was the, the wrong call to go to point. You could have actually gotten more value from going to point than from going to the Mega, because you could have prevented them from getting a tick, but you've got to commit and go to point. Basically, if you have committed to going to point, they would still be at 0%. Oh, Alright, I like this, this is a decent flank. One thing with Tracer is that you really want to go in with the flanks when your team is in the middle of the fight. Because if you go in too early, even if you get a pick, then your team cannot push it because, well, 5 people are still here. And you are also not taking away any attention, so they can all just... Turn around and shoot at you, and you will not get a pick. On the other hand, if you wait until they're pushing, and you go in, well, they are fighting your team at the same time. So they cannot all turn around to deal with you, so you can get a lot more value that way. Like what you did on the first pain, on the first, like... Uh, what you did here was actually pretty good. The problem is that both your supports were already dead, because you took too long to engage. But you basically went in, and their tanks were fighting your tanks. And the Moira and Diana had to look at you. Yeah, you didn't kill either of them, but because the Moira and Diana were looking at you, their tanks had no support for about like five seconds. And yeah, the problem is that our tanks also didn't have any support, so eventually they just won the fight with Ko. I guarantee that it's not a lucky grenade. I, I guarantee that you're two blocks. So you get shot, you're exposed to the wither. You've got to be mindful of that. You, you could have killed the Moira, you are playing too close. And you just die because you're trying to go in. It's not a lucky grenade if you're trying to go in. Let's look at this from above. <laughs> here you are. So if you stay here and you track the Moira, you probably kill the Moira, right? You probably, like now, you probably kill the Moira if you stay far away. Then you try to go in, which means that you're literally running into their team. So I don't know where you're trying to go in. Again, playing further back means that uh, you are better off. You can aim better and so angry grenades will probably not hit you around the corner. You recall, that's good. <clears throat> you look at the Widow, you shouldn't. The Widow is in a weird position. <clears throat> look how low the Moira is. If you just play here... Two things happen. First, you probably kill the Moira because you can track her better. And secondly, you don't have to chase into the team. And then you just blink into the jungle. This is not a lucky grenade. You literally blink into it. That's not a lucky grenade. That's your fault. I will just outright say it. So you're playing too close and then you go even closer. You, uh, that's not lucky, you literally put yourself inside the grenade. 
which is unfortunate for sure. You were searching for the weather, right? It's not the point I'm trying to make. The point I'm trying to make is that... Oh yeah, she's, she's up here. Uh, in either case, uh, what I'm trying to say is... Don't go this far ahead. Just play from here. You're actually distracting the Moira, which was pretty good. You could have killed the Moira. Watch the grenade. I, I don't care what, where the grenade goes. If he shoots a new one, you still die. You literally blinked into it. It's your fault. I guess the grenade that hits you burns a lot, but it's fine. You are going into a tight corridor in front of Jangra. It's gonna happen. It <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Hold on. One second. Again, you're running into a tight choke in front of Changrat. If it's not that grenade, it's any other grenade he shoots. Don't go, like I told you earlier, Changrat wants to be this close. It would have been 100% preventable. Uh, like, even if you were still playing here, if you didn't blink in front of Jangrat, you would not have died. You would still be dueling the, the, the Moira. So, yeah, and, and it was a good timing. Like, look at this, your team is going in. It was good timing, and you were distracting the Moira. It was actually pretty good until you blinked into the... You could have played a little further from the Moira, so it wasn't perfect. You could have killed the Moira, so with better tracking or playing further away, so tracking is easier. But overall, um, it was actually pretty good until you blinked in front of the Junkrat. And yeah, again, maybe you got quote-unquote unlucky because the grenade bounced weird. But if he shoots a new one, you are literally in front of him. Like, hold on. <clears throat> you literally go in front of him. Any grenade he shoots is gonna kill you. If he presses the left click here, you are dead immediately. He reloads with 4 out of 5 bullets for no reason instead of killing you, and you die anyway. But you see what, how the mistake goes? Sure, he shouldn't have reloaded. He should have just shot you. But you would have died anyway. At a high rank, you definitely would be dead as well. Anna can just nade you and you die because you're also in front of the Anna. So, yeah, don't do this. <laughs> Fight this host. Well, Fight this maybe not lost. Fight is probably lost. I don't know, Beatbox is good and we are a fan, so... At the very least, it's still a kinda close fight. And the Widow is in main, okay. <clears throat> That's a great pick from your Roadhog. Your Roadhog has been getting amazing picks, by the way. Tyre kills a Lucio, which is pretty good because he could have killed a lot more. <clears throat> don't worry about it. That's, that's why the... That's why we got both reviews, to watch and learn. Right? <laughs> um, everyone makes mistakes, even the pros make mistakes. And honestly, the thing is, with the, when the pros make mistakes, when the pros make mistakes, they are a lot more noticeable. Because um, they are pros, so when they make a mistake, it's like, well, how the fuck did this happen? But they are also human, everyone makes mistakes. <clears throat> Your hug is really good. Literally, play of the game, how kill three people by himself. Don't do... <clears throat> um, don't do the Widow. Uh, unless, like, if you can't get close to the Widow, then you've got the advantage, and that's really good. But if the Widow's up here, you're not gonna kill her. She's probably gonna kill you before. Uh, Let your hand, so you've got a hand, so let your hand, so do the Widow if it's necessary. <clears throat> or Sigma can just put a shield in front of her. Or both of can just hook her. Dealing with the Widow is not your job, but if she's on the low ground, then you can do it. <clears throat> I don't dislike this, but you did go on this flank last time. So you do want to change up your routes. So because you... Oh, never mind. You did not go on this flank last time. You went around. I take it back. <clears throat> I like this. You're playing a little deep, but I like it. 
Now onto spam camp. I think you're looking for spam camps, but now onto spam camp. Sorry. That's a free kill. You don't have to be get you don't have to get this close. Oh lucky. And again, okay, hold on. I want to make this point very clear. Blah blah blah, win the fight, win the fight. Oh wait, I went forward, I didn't go backward. There we go. So Here you can just shoot Diana from here. When she lands, now put your crosser on her head from this distance, hold left click, and she dies. And I want you to make you look at it this way. If you're here, look at her movement. Right? She moves this far away. And you can follow that with your cursor very easy, right? It's not a she only moves, she's not ADSing, she's not moving forward and backward, she is just moving this way. You can kill her very easily. Instead, you go forward, and this movement now becomes a lot more difficult to predict. You also crouch, so you miss her head. You put a lot of shots into her, which is really good, but non most of them don't go on the head. And then you go to reload, which is a problem because you want the reason you want to one kill people is that it is basically your timing. Then you can blink out, you can reload, you can go back in, right? In this case. You got her low enough that a melee can kill her if you can get a melee on her. But the problem is that you're playing so close that she's actually outside of melee range. Because if you blink, you go past her. If you were playing a little bit further back, even with the same accuracy, thank you for the follow, Lemon Lime Server. Never had one of those. If you were playing a little further back, you can blink. This is the distance of your blink. Then you melee her and she's dead. What you're playing right now is really bad because you are... <clears throat> You're crouching by herself without crouch here. Yeah, yeah you, you just didn't have to crouch. Or if you want to crouch for whatever reason, maybe noise, maybe um, whatever, you got to make sure you correct your crosser upwards. And yeah, you cannot kill her because you are playing too close, but slightly too far away so you cannot melee. And you don't clip her because you crouch and you play too close so it's harder to track. <clears throat> Alright. You get untied and then you kill her. But you've taken a lot of damage and you're forced to use cooldowns. So good job on the flank. I really like the flank. That the flank was really good. But you could have done it a lot cleaner, is my point. <clears throat> you get out and honestly it's, you probably won this fight. Like this flank probably wins you this fight. Unlucky I you blinked into the trap. Not unlucky, you could have seen it, but that, that time let's just call it unlucky. You die. Again, that's fine. You trading your life on, 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 on defense, right? On defense particularly. Trading your life for any of them is good. Because you can come back faster than most people. And they're in attack, so they got to come back longer. And if they want to attack 5v5, then you've got the advantage. So, I, I do really like that flank. You spawn, you come back. Way too close. Good stick. Didn't need it, but good stick. Only got killed by junk. Right, but it's it's preventable deaths, right? It's definitely preventable deaths. And you didn't just die to quote unquote lucky grenades, you died because of bad positioning. And I guess just just not we can call this one unlucky because you blinked into the trap. You should have seen it. If you were just looking for it, you would have seen it on the ground. But let's just call it unlucky. We, we can agree that that one is unlucky. The first one was definitely preventable though. <clears throat> I like taking the flank. I really like taking the flank. Like you go for Diana, I like it. You are not shooting. And do you see what I mean? Hold on, this is exactly what I mean. And I keep harping on this because it's probably what was going to make the biggest change in your gameplay. But look at this. You prepare to kill Diana, right? Let's zip it up just a little bit. You get so close. Like, look at this. This is okay. This is not ideal. Even this is okay. But look how close you get. Right? That every single movement of Diana 
requires a major adjustment of your crosshair. She goes left, you go way far. She goes right, you go way far. You see what I mean? Because you're trying to over adjust for every single movement. The tracking is not good, but being so close makes it a lot more difficult. Because if she takes one step, you've got to way over correct for it. Playing further back, like if you were playing here instead, you would have seen the Moira to begin with. But even if you... <laughs> that's just a funny train. Uh, but if she takes one step, it's a minor correction. Instead of just having to move your entire... Also, overcorrecting is actually usually a sign of high sensitivity, not low sensitivity. Like, to me, looking like this, it looks like your sense is actually way too high. Because you keep overcorrecting over and over. Hanzo kills Diana. It gives you some value, but the Hanzo just got a headshot, so she would have died anyway. Again, you don't need healing, go get a mini. There's a mini right here. If you're gonna play Tracer, you should learn where the health packs are on, the, on every map. And this is a really good one because, well, most of them cannot see you. Hanzo can, but you don't see him anyway. You're literally standing in front of Hanzo. Did you not see the Hanzo? I saw, I, I'm pretty sure I saw the Hanzo. <coughs> Could I kill the Vine, but let's not worry about it. To fight this one anyway. Way too close to the Ana, so tracking is difficult. I guess you didn't see the answer. I saw the arrow. I'm not sure I wanted to turn it I wanted to turn it at the dam. From that engagement, I think it's too hard because you kept like if the is here, you keep doing this overcorrect, then try to overcorrect. Like let's say this mega is Diana. You kept doing this. You kept doing like Oh, Anna's here, my crosser is here, I'm gonna get Diana. Oops, I overcorrected. I'm gonna get back to Diana. Oops, I overcorrected again. I'm gonna get back to Diana. Oops, I overcorrected again. You kept overcorrecting, which is usually a high uh, sign of sensitivity that is too high. And it may actually be because if you got a big mousepad, right, and you're using it to the fullest, then instead of doing like a 180, you're doing actually like a 270 on each side. <clears throat> so that's why I recommend, I cannot just tell you what sensitivity is good for you, because it's different for everyone, depending on several different reasons. But I just recommend uh, trying to get like a 360 from each edge to the mousepad to the other. I like that you go get the Mega. Remember that minis are really good for you. A mini is 75 health, which is half of your HP. <clears throat> Monkey's not the tool you want to take. Jungra too close. Not, again, if this is not unlucky, you're just way too close. And you're playing main. You, as Tracer, you never go main. You get to the flanks. That's why Tracer is a flanker. That's just bad positioning. Okay, so here you go for the monkey. Yeah, you just go to the practice range and see what's good for you. And again, you don't want to play main. I know that there's a jungler over there. You see the grenade. Are you going to try to chase the jungler that is close range? Yeah, you are. You're dead. So again, you don't want to take duels this close. Because they are better for you, and like I said, because you went so close, all he had to do was throw a mine at you and you were dead. So, reason should not, not to go main, because people look main, and you're Tracer, you want to distract them from main. Uh, reasons not to get close to the Jungrat? That. So, that's not an unlucky one, that's just your fault, it's bad positioning. The trap, we can agree that the trap was unlucky. I like this, you're going for the flank. <coughs> Don't jump like this. Jumping makes your aim worse. And it makes you predictable. So jumping is bad. Crouch instead. <coughs> like this, shooting the Rhine is usually a very big annoyance. Like, if I'm a Rhine player and I'm being shot by a Tracer, I go nuts. It's very annoying because I cannot turn around to do the Tracer. And if my team doesn't get, take care of the Tracer, then I just take a ton of damage because Tracer does a lot of damage. <clears throat> now Vine is probably not the best target because he got... Nano? Hanzo behind you. You blink away, take the mini. Uh, very low, good recall. You bl I like this. You blink back so you can do the Hanzo at the range that's... Better for you, but not 
worse for him because Francis is a long range character. You just don't take the duel. Okay, I'm fine with not taking a duel with the Hanzo. Uh, you go for the Hanzo, anyway. And you can see what I mean, right? You keep overcorrecting. So I do think that your sense may be too high. Again, so don't expect any of my tips to just be magically make you better. That that you think I can say you is try different sensitivities, maybe lower, maybe higher. I don't know. Depends on what, how much mouse pad room you've got, and if you aim with your arm instead, if you aim with your arm instead of your wrist, you probably need more more, more movement and a lower sensitivity. And playing further away will actually make you. Um, it's gonna take a little bit of time to incorporate into your playstyle, just not being so close to people, but it's definitely gonna be a l very helpful. <laughs> By the way, your Roto is insane. <laughs> oh, we are not even halfway through. <laughs> I like this flank. Remember, melee does give you away, so be careful when you melee stuff like that. Because if people have sound and are using sound cues at higher range, at higher ranks, they will hear it. <laughs> if you arm with the aim, oh shut up. If you aim with your arm, you know what I mean. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> word wrong. Too close. Like, see how difficult it is to track someone this close? She takes two steps and you've got to turn around 180. By the way, it's just stick the right. Stick. Okay, good stick. Again, I don't, I don't mind you throwing. It's one already, but it's fine. It's like last fight, you've got to use it. It's fine. See how difficult it is to track someone? When they move just a little bit. Uh, she was walking on a straight line, but when they move just a little bit. When you're that close? Okay, this is a very winnable game. <clears throat> so, attacking a tracer is even more difficult. Because again, they just hold the high ground. You cannot go left. Fame with the run. No, it's not bad. It's actually good. Uh, most hits can pros aim. Wait, I'm, I'm very loud. I'm going to turn myself down just a little bit. That, that should do. I was peeking a little bit. Okay. If you aim with your arm, it's actually good. Most uh, first, it prevents wrist injuries, which is already really good. Most pros do it. Most pros aim with their arm because it's better for uh, precise aiming, and it's honestly just a little bit better overall. Uh, I just know a lot of people that, like I actually, before I got a desk, I used to play with a laptop, and I didn't have a lot of. Uh, mouse room, so I would just play with wrist timing because it's all I could do. And a lot of people are in a similar situation. If you don't have a lot of uh, mouse pad room, you've got to aim with your wrist. And I'm actually still better at aiming with my wrist, but I do arm aiming anyway because it's just better for, well, in general, and it doesn't make my wrist hurt. And playing for a long while while um, wrist aiming, it makes my wrist hurt. So we don't want to go left, like this is a big no-no. They've got a Jungrat, so the Jungrat is just going to spam down this. You really don't want to go this way, like this is really bad for you. Because, well, first you've got to go to a tight choke to get to them. They expect you to come this way, this is basically main. Well, this is technically main, but most of teams go this way. Uh, especially low rank, so they will just be looking this way for you. And what you've got to do is you've got to either come this way and put prone pressure, or the ideal thing to do is take the stairs and either come this way or take the long rotation and come this way. That's bad. That's very bad. You don't want to do this. Um, your widow gets a pick, which is good, but you don't. Yeah. Again, that's not that's not unlucky jungle team. He's just spamming main. He's just spamming your team. You are in a bad position. You should not be in the front line like this. You should be taking a flank. Because they just spam main. They just do damage this way. 
and that that's how it usually works. By the way, your hog's insane. So most of your Jungrat deaths are actually just bad positioning from your part. It's not that he got a lucky lucky bounce. Because we, you know that Jungrat just bounces a choke. Like that's what he does. He's gonna be throwing a lot of damage down this way. Like through this choke. And if you just go in front of the choke, you're gonna die. You need to take out that flank. If you get in front of the Jungrat, he's gonna kill you. That's a great anti from Urana. It's probably a very winnable fight. I like that you're backing out a little bit. I do like this. Because you can keep your range from Ryan especially. Uh, take I take back what I just said, but good finish off on the diva. And yeah, Ryan does so much damage to you right now. Always, but especially now. Just this is a lost fight. You damage, you blink away. You blink away too late, you take one shot. This is pre patch by the way, I noticed you only lost 75 health. And again, look how much damage is coming this way. The entire enemy team is looking this way, right? Like the Divas here, the Jungrats here, Ryan and Dan are here, the Mercy is with them. The entire enemy team is looking this way. You just really want to go the other way. 85 damage. See you, Sundead. Now it's fine. <laughs> I, it, you, you, it, it was funny. Don't worry, I'm not upset or anything. I'll just... If you take a jab at me, I'm just gonna jab back. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that, it was fun, you don't worry about it, and see you whenever I do your review, I guess. Or next stream, or tomorrow. We'll see. But have a, have a good time. <clears throat> okay, so your Widow gets a very big pick. Stop going, mate. This is good. You can kill the right, don't get too close, but it's good. You can kill Diana, I like this. You can just take the diva, she's got no defense matrix. Probably tomorrow. Alright, see you. You can just stick her, make sure the fight is won. I'm fine with you sticking the diva here if you want to. I'm also fine with you not sticking the diva. I can leave my house. Oh, you're leaving your house, okay. Uh, have a good time. Oh, the general just got two picks. Don't go do too far forward, your team still needs your point. Shoot the diva. That Sigma. I've got no comments. I've got no comments. I've got literally no comments on this Sigma. I, I don't know what to say. Are you okay, Sigma? Well, that's unfortunate. Just take it, just take it, just take it. Make sure to fight this one. You lost two people to the jungle. Jungle's dead, but just in case, you can just stick her and make sure to fight this one. Yeah! I've got no comments about that Sigma. They come back with the Genji. Great finish off on the Mercy. Finish. Uh, being this close will also lead to you missing sticks like that, because being this close basically means that because it's got an arc, if someone moves just a little bit, you can't correct to throw it at them. Whereas if you press Q and they move a little bit, you can still correct. So yeah, missing that stick is also because you're playing too close. Fight one anyway, we press every Q we've got. There. It's fine, you shouldn't kill too many people. I still hear it going. Nice. Nice. Jungrat's dead. You're looking for Jungrat, but he died. The, your widow killed him. Like this, not ideal, but yeah, just spam. It's not your best range, but it's better than nothing. You're getting all charged. Now we set up for a flank because your team is with us. That's a, again, that's a great pick from a Widow. No I like this, it's not the best flank because it's not a big flank, like their tank can just look this way instead and still cover main. Right, but it's better than being on the front line, for sure. 
Yes. You can shoot through that. You can shoot that way, yes. Like this, like even this is a decent flank because if your team is going this way, you can do damage this way. And if they want to look at you, then... Uh, they said that Genji was there. Okay, yeah, I see. Genji got out safely anyway. So yeah, Genji has more mobility than you do because of verticality, so... That's a lucky kill. He fell... Oh, careful with the mines! Oh my god, you took so much damage from the mines. Like this, yeah, going behind Ryan is a really good idea. You don't have to finish him off, look at how much damage you did. You can now play safe, go get a mini, go get a mini. Okay, get some healing, it's fine as well. Try no shield, good pick. Another bomb. This time Sigma does block it. Again, just stick the mech, just stick the mech, you want to, you want to make heals as fast as you can. You miss the mech. <laughs> Not like his kill. Yeah, 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 that's right. That's exactly what you wanted. We planned for the jungler to fall in front of us. Exactly. That's why you were holding left click at a long range. You knew that the jungler was about to fall. It's just a 200 IQ play. We blink away from the Genji. I like that. Genji stabbed to the Widow anyway. Like this, you got too close again to the jungler. You haven't killed him yet? Then you swap to the... Oh, we're gonna lose this fight! No, we could have won this fight so bad! And you swap targets a lot here. The Jangrat was slow, then you went to the Ana instead of finishing the Jangrat. Then the Ana was slow, but you went back to the Jangrat, let the Malkyl back up. And you were playing too close, so you couldn't confirm the kills, and the fight is lost at this point, probably. Maybe not? Maybe not? Your, your road hook is inside, he just killed 3 people. Ana is better target than Genji. Ana's dead, Genji's dead. Should run, nice, well done. So, too long don't read, uh, play further away, and find your sensitivity. Because to me it looks like you are overcorrecting. But you may also be overcorrecting because you are playing too close. So I would try playing further away first. And if you're still overcorrecting, by when you're playing a little bit further away, then you can change your sense. Because you may just be playing so close that you just go for massive overcorrections because you're trying to track people this close. Because look at this. No it's just, you, you're just playing too close, but yeah. Well done. You win this fight, you win the game. So yeah. And you did get value at some points. You could have gotten more value. Uh, you you could have confirmed a lot of kills that you didn't confirm, and I think that is what's going to make the biggest difference. If you play a little bit further away, you can both prevent damage from coming to your way and confirm more kills, because your tracking will be better. Right, let's take a two or three minute break, and then I'll do a lot. I'll be right back. <laughs> 